So imagine you dropped something valuable in the water. Just imagine crystal clear stream or maybe even a, a kind of still pond. Crystal clear water, you drop something valuable in the water. But let's 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 assume everybody can see, and now everyone knows you dropped something valuable in the water, and they might be able to get to it before you. You dropped this thing in the water; it's your fault. But now you got to figure out how to stop people from getting to it. So maybe you muddy the waters. Now I, for one, think that news should be reported accurately. This isn't about accurate news reporting. The standard here is defamation, so it's more so news reporting whether or not it is defamatory, not whether or not it is accurate. There is a level of inaccuracy that will not be considered defamatory. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Just a few days ago, we talked about the Devin Nunes Twitter lawsuit where he's suing two Twitter accounts, the Devin Nunes mom and De Devin Nunes cow accounts. And it's hilarious. Go check that out. But guess what? He's at it again. And he is now suing CNN for defamation again. He's suing CNN for $435 million. $350,000. That $350,000 on the end doesn't seem really important if you're suing for $435 million now, does it? Let's just get straight into it. CNN is the mother of fake news, he says. It is the least trusted name. CNN is eroding the fabric of America, proselytizing, sowing distrust and disharmony. It must be held accountable. Notice how many lawsuits we read that start like that. On November 22nd, 2019, CNN published a demonstrably false hit piece about plaintiff. CNN intentionally falsified the following facts. Devin Nunes was in Vienna last year, says CNN. Fake news. The truth. Devin Nunes did not go to Vienna or anywhere else in Austria in 2018. Between November 30th and 20, no, 2018 and December 3rd, 2018, Nunes visited Benghazi, Libya on official business on the House Intelligence Committee to uh, discuss security issues with General Haftar. Nunes also traveled to Malta, where he met with U.S. and Maltese officials and participated in a repatriation ceremony for the remains of an American World War II soldier missing in action. False claim. Devin Nunes met with Victor Shokin to discuss digging up dirt on Joe Biden. Truth! Defendant Nunes has never met Victor Shokin. This meeting never took place. Victor Shokin doesn't know and has never heard of Devin Nunes. Here's an inline link so you can click on it, judge. Because you know judges do that, right? Judges go click on links, right? A person close to Shokin has also denied the claim. Shokin denied he met with Nunes. Fake claim! Devin Nunes began communicating with Lev Parnas around the time of the Vienna trip. F true claim! Devin Nunes did not communicate with Parnas around December 2018 uh, about the Vienna trip. A trip that never happened. It continues. The trusted source at CNN's fake news story was a man indicted by the United States government charged with multiple federal crimes. A man who faces years in a federal penitentiary, Lev Parnas! A face only a mother could love. It was obvious to everyone, including disgraceful CNN, that Parnas was a fraudster and a hustler. It was obvious that his lies were part of a thinly veiled attempt to obstruct justice and to trick either United States Attorney or House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff into offering immunity in return for information about plaintiff, a prominent United States Congressman and ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. There were obvious reasons to doubt the veracity and accuracy of the information Parnas provided. MSNBC justice and security analyst Matthew Miller aptly stated in a tweet linked here. Look, Parnas is a fraudster and a hustler with little credibility. But if this isn't true, it should be quite easy for Nunes to disprove. Now, I, 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 I need to stop and explain myself. Why am I reading this like this? Because... If you go back and look at what other lawsuits look like for genuine, sincere claims, sure, they tell a story with their introduction and they make out a legal claim. They make out the elements of the legal claim. This feels like propaganda. This feels like someone is not writing for a judge to make a decision, but is writing for someone to see the filing 
and say, that Devin Nunes, great. I'm so glad he stood up to those fake news broadcasters. It doesn't need to succeed. In fact, it might not need to even get before a judge. It might not even be about the judge. $400 and drafting this complaint gets you this level of visibility. I'm reading it. You're watching it. Hmm. Plaintiff is Devin Nunes, a citizen of California, born 1973 and serving since 2003 on the United States House of Representatives. He currently represents California's 22nd Congressional District, San Joaquin Valley, and Tulare in Fresno counties. He and his wife have three daughters. He is the author of a book called Restoring the Public, so he's really selling himself here about how awesome he is. He raised cattle as a teenager. There's where the Devin Nunes cow thing comes from. And he really does. He's got he's got himself rid he himself. This, this is this is uh, right, how do I do this? This is uh I can't get up there. Okay, so this is, you know, half a page here, then a full page of about himself here, another full another most of a page here. So he's got two whole pages just about how awesome he is. I'm sure he thinks he's an awesome guy. Now let's see what he's got about CNN. Division of Warner Media, Turner Business Unit, Digital Properties, delivers news 24 hours a day, 4,000 journalists, claims it reaches more individuals than anyone else on television, massive digital footprint, lots of followers. Then they start naming some of the employees, Vicki Ward, Chris Cuomo. They are agents and there's an attorney, and they go into talking about Parnas's charges. He was charged with federal crimes of conspiracy to defraud the United States, et cetera, et cetera. Have you seen yet where anything where he says, A, B, C, these are my claims for defamation? No. When we're literally a quarter of the way, actually not even, this is 47 pages long, we're already nine pages into it, so we're a quarter of the way through it, but we're nine pages into it, and he hasn't gotten to the point, or he hasn't gotten to a claim. He's still telling the story to someone else. He's not talking to the judge. He's talking to you. You're not supposed to know it, though. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm filtering it. And then he goes into things about Shokin and Joe Biden. While visiting Kiev in December 2015, Biden threatened Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko that if he did not fire Shokin, the U.S. would hold back $1 billion in loan guarantees. I'm pretty damn sure that is the that, that whole conspiracy right there has been debunked like several dozen times over. Uh, let's see if we can include a link to it somewhere in the description. He goes on to make further claims that Biden specifically recalled the threat and said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor is not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a bitch, he's got fired. If I recall correctly, this was official business and was not something like a quid pro quo arrangement, a this for that, or that arrangement. So uh, just, just FYI, bookending this for you, Devin Nunes is not quite telling you the whole story. You might want to read up on that one. Dmitry Furtish is a Ukrainian oligarch who lives in Vienna, Austria. Furtish was indicted by the United States on multiple counts of racketeering, money laundering, conspiracy, aiding and abetting. And, and keep in mind, when he says that he was indicted and he's citing these things, he was indicted by the Obama administration. So he's citing the Obama administration. He was arrested in Vienna by Austrian law enforcement and released on bond several days later, but barred from leaving Austria. There was an extradition request, and a Vienna court did order him to be extradited. Furtish submitted a writ to the Austrian Supreme Court requesting a retrial, and they have not ruled, so I'm assuming he's still sitting there. We're going to skip jurisdiction and venue. August 12th, 2019, after speaking ex parte with a Democratic staff member, ex parte is a legal term, so why you're including that about Democratic staff members, I don't know. When we talk about ex parte, we mean parties before a judge and one party's not present and their rights could be adjudicated, but they're not present. So that's, that's illegal, except under very specific circumstances. An anonymous whistleblower filed a complaint. The anonymous complaint 
based entirely on hearsay, states, in the course of my official duties, I have received information from multiple U.S. government officials that the President of the United States is using the power of his office to solicit interference from a foreign country in the 2020 U.S. election. This interference includes, among other things, pressuring a foreign country to investigate one of the president's main domestic political rivals. The president's personal lawyer, Mr. Rudolph Giuliani, is a central figure in this effort. Attorney General Barr appears to be involved as well. And that that is the inquiry that is currently being pursued in the House impeachment inquiry. Um, however, again, something entirely disingenuous that you might not have picked up on. When Nunes says that the complaint is based entirely on hearsay, he's using legal terms. Because, of course, you'll say to yourself, oh, yeah, yeah, that is hearsay. That report, he, that couldn't be admitted in a court of law. This isn't that. We're not in a court of law. The House impeachment inquiry is not a court of law. The whistleblower complaints are not courts of law and are not complaints at law. So he's hoping to confuse you into thinking that something is not correct because it doesn't meet some other standard. He's saying that because something doesn't meet the standard of admissibility in court, which that hasn't even been ruled on, there are lots of hearsay exceptions. So he's hoping you don't know any of that. He's hoping you're stupid. He's hoping you're too stupid to look into the veracity of his claims in this complaint. September 24th, there was an impeachment inquiry announced. Adam Schiff conducted secretive interviews in connection with the impeachment inquiry. Again, not a court of law, and he's hoping that you don't know that. On October 10th, Parnas was arrested at Dulles International Airport on charges that he schemed to funnel foreign money to U.S. politicians while trying to influence U.S.-Ukraine relations. At the time of his arrest, he had a one-way ticket on a flight out of the country. As a result of his arrest, Parnas' position as a reliable source of information was compromised. Again, he's hoping that you are too stupid to know how credibility in court cases works and then too stupid to know that this isn't a court case. On October 23rd, Parnas was released from custody on a $1 million secured bond. So in other words, if someone gets arrested, he's saying that you should never trust anything they say whatsoever, especially when they say things against Devin Nunes. That's not how that works. Many times when people are arrested, they flip. They, they will provide information about the criminal enterprise in which they were involved. Duh. Come on, like, everybody knows that. You're really, he thinks you're that stupid, and I know you're not that stupid. The court required Parnas to surrender his passport, restricted his travel. Therefore, he's saying that this translates to a complete lack of trust and confidence. Okay, yes, a lack of trust and confidence in Parnas leaving the country or staying in the country. Sure, yeah, keep him in the country. Not long after his release from custody, Parnas began to concoct a plan to obstruct the impeachment inquiry. You know who concludes this much and doesn't present the facts to you to make your own conclusion? Narcissistic people who think you are too stupid to decide things for yourselves. Why not just give us the facts of what actually happened and then let us decide for yourself? No, he. this is a deliverable. This is a document that he can print out with a court stamp and everything right there, right at the top, court time stamp and everything looks real official. He gets to print it out and he can show it to someone, whoever he needs to show it to, to convince them, look, he's opposed those dumb Democrats. He really thinks you are that stupid. I do not think you are that dumb. And I do not think that he can pull a wool over your eyes that easy by paying a $400 filing fee. So instead, he writes this kind of stuff. With full knowledge of press accounts, Parnas started to manufacture stories he believed would assist him. He told, he, let's just let's see if we can find facts. Like, where are the actual facts? This is a conclusion, that, that previous statement. Parnas claimed that not long before Ukrainian press, where's the citation to where it was said? There's no citation. So this is not written by a lawyer who wants to cite things. 
Parnas stated that he told a representative of the incoming Ukrainian government that it had to announce an investigation into President Trump's political rival, Joe Biden, or his son, or else Vice President Mike Pence would not attend a swearing-in of the new president, and the United States would freeze aid. The problem with Parnas' story, as was reported by the New York Times, is that the story is knowingly false. Parnas business partner Igor Freuman Fruman publicly confirmed that Mr. Parnas' claim was false. The men never... So one person said something was false. One person said something was true. Therefore, Devin Nunes wins a defamation claim. I think we're going to need more. Parnas also lied about his connections with President Trump. Parnas told Ward that when he attended the White House Hanukkah party with Rudolph Giuliani, they huddled with the president privately. Parnas stated that President Trump gave him instructions for a secret James Bond mission to find material on Joe Biden. So why don't we just have people testify about this? But okay, so what he's doing here is telling the whole story here instead of making the legal claims and proving them and getting his defamation judgment because that takes a lot of work and you might not care by then. In fact, he's hoping that you won't care by then because it's probably not going to look like this by then. This is all probably going to get pared down, might even get thrown out on a motion to dismiss because... What are the damages? You must have actual damages in a defamation claim. And they said things that could be arguably bent to me to be untrue, you know, or, or you know, Lev Parnas reported that something happened and then that something happened turns out to be false. That doesn't mean that that's defamation, that Lev Parnas reported it or told CNN those things, even if those things are untrue. And... There's a requirement, by the way, that Devin Nunes gives CNN a chance to retract, to issue a retraction. That's why you see those once in a while, because they avoid defamation lawsuits. If he hasn't given them that chance, it seems he might have skipped that part for some reason. I wonder what reason that could be. Maybe this isn't a sincere lawsuit for the purposes of adjudicating a genuine je defamation claim, but rather this is propaganda because Devin Nunes doesn't like it when people say mean things about him. But Devin Nunes doesn't realize that people wouldn't say mean things about him if he didn't do idiotic shit like he's done. In addition to CNN's actual knowledge that Parnas lied to the FEC, and that after his arrest, Parnas began circulating false and fantastical stories. So, okay, we skipped something here, did we? I didn't skip anything, but he skipped something. Where did CNN get actual knowledge, but from the fact that New York Times reported something? Yeah, because take a look here. He's saying that because the Washington Times reported something differently than CNN, that that means that CNN loses a court case. That's not true. They have to overcome, they have to, they have to, they have to, there has to be a high burden of proof in defamation cases. So just showing that another newspaper or another journalist wrote an article and that those two articles said different things doesn't mean that either one of them automatically lose a defamation case. That's how weak and tenuous this is so far. We're 13 pages into this and he couldn't tell you something stronger by now? So he says that CNN is deliberate, coercive, well-orchestrated scheme, knew that Parnas was a hustler, not in the good way. Okay. So there are quotation marks here. Normally quotation marks are quoting something and you would then put the citation right afterwards, like right here. If you're a lawyer and you're writing according to the blue book, which is required by your judge, then you are supposed to be putting your citations there. Now, maybe there's a citation down here. No, this is a citation as in like a link, like a hyperlink. A hyperlink is not a blue book citation to a legal source of authority. So none of this is written for the judge, in my professional opinion and my personal opinion. From all of the evidence, CNN was aware that Parnas is a well-renowned, is a renowned liar, fraudster, hustler. CNN knew that Parnas and his attorneys 
and other political operatives were shopping a story. And then CNN writes, Giuliani associate willing to tell Congress Nunes met with ex-Ukrainian official to get dirt on Biden. Okay, so what's defamatory about that? Even if Lev Parnas is not telling the truth, which we don't know yet, let's, let's forget about the actual truth or falsity of the underlying claim and just get to what defamation is. CNN is reporting that somebody said that, not that it actually happened and CNN has firsthand knowledge. I'm, I, I don't like defending CNN. They're not my favorite news network. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't watch them. In fact, when I go to my parents' house and they got like some news, I'm like, dad, mute that, just turn that off. Like, I don't even want that on in the background. I don't always win that fight, but sometimes, sometimes we turn off the, the Fox News and the CNN because both of them are pretty bad, but they're on different sides of the aisle. So they continue on with numerous egregiously false and defamatory statements, meetings in Vienna. Here's a picture of Nunes instead with the guy in Libya, uh, Haftar. Um, so naturally, one picture totally disproves whether he could have gone there at all during the, the time in question. I don't think so. But try to think of who it would convince. Someone that he thinks is really dumb. So he's really talking up how he didn't do anything wrong. Just try to put yourself in his shoes. What would motivate you to go this far in responding to a news organization saying a politician did something as reported by some criminal? I, I, I don't see how this is a appropriate reaction. I see this as an overreaction. If I was accused of murder and I had plane tickets out of the country, I would just present the plane tickets. In fact, I'm an attorney who represents people accused of things. And when they tell me that they were not present for the things they were accused of, we present the flight itinerary and we present proof that they were out of the country. And it takes like half a paragraph. Well, I couldn't have met with the people in Ukraine because look, I met with 30 other people. I couldn't have met with 30 people and met with a 31st person. I met with so many people. <laughs> and he's hoping that you're so stupid, you won't notice that he's fooled you. In a November 1st article, Parnas claimed to have a strong connection to Furtish. By placing plaintiff in the same city as Furtish, Parnish would be able to fabricate more fake news, including that plaintiff was working with the indicted oligarch on some nefarious plot. And they go on, Nunes met with Shokin in Vienna last December is, okay, so at least we get the defamatory statements finally on page 20. Nunes met with Shokin in Vienna last December. Parnas and Nunes began communicating around the time of the Vienna trip. Parnas worked to put Nunes in touch with Ukrainians. All of this is provable or disprovable, and he could provide said proof. And if this is a sincere, which I don't think it is, but if this is, or he wants to change it into a sincere attempt to clear his name, he could provide the exonerating evidence. But remember, this is his lawsuit. He's not defending from these claims in some lawsuit. He is filing a lawsuit because he doesn't like that CNN said Parnas said stuff about him. It's weird, isn't it? Then they go into a discussion between Cuomo and Ward. All right, so next big question, how do we know that Nunes met with Shokin? So it gets interesting. So Shokin tells Lev Parnas, and what's interesting is that Nunes comes back and tries to recruit Lev Parnas. He does recruit Lev Parnas to merge his effort, his and Rudy Giuliani's investigations with his. Devin Nunes at the hearing saying, this is crazy that the president would want Ukraine to look at the Bidens. The prosecutor who was the one at the center of all the controversy met with Nunes in Vienna, right, last December. So before all this other stuff they're saying was just about one phone call way before, months before, Shokin then tells Parnas, the shady guy at the center of all of this, and then Nunes staffer met with Parnas. Parnas? Well, so then does Nunes. Nunes met with Parnas. Nunes speaks to Parnas several about dirt on the Bidens. So they're asked to merge operations essentially. So they had a discussion basically where they said that Nunes met with them in Vienna. This is all about the impeachment inquiry and whether or not Nunes was improperly involved with Lev Parnas in some way 
and whether or not Nunes was involved in the quid pro quo in Ukraine in some way, and whether or not the Ukraine thing is quid pro quo or impeachable or illegal or traitorous or treasonous or whatever you want to call it, that's all at issue in the impeachment inquiry. So why wouldn't you present the exonerating evidence during the impeachment inquiry? Because it's not about that. It continues, there's more Cuomo and Hill things. So yes, CNN has said a lot that they think that Ukraine met with Devin Nunes in Vienna, I guess December, November, December of last year. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't even know if CNN knows if it's true or not, but this seems like an overreaction. Is it dangerous for CNN to have discovery on Nunes? Like surely he doesn't want this to go to discovery because of all the questions that they can ask. Uh, yeah, that's another good point. When you file a lawsuit like this, both parties get to discover relevant information. So I'm going to guess that Nunes has basically no plans to cooperate with this lawsuit in any way. He expects I, I bet you he expects it will be over before it gets that far. Filing the lawsuit may actually have already accomplished his goals. If in three weeks or three months' time the lawsuit is dismissed because Nunes dismisses it, withdraws it himself, are you going to even hear about it? Is Lawful Masses going to get to make a substantive video for YouTube about how Devin Nunes dismissed this lawsuit that we just spent half an hour reading here? Am I going to make a substantial video and sell it to you on YouTube and get paid? No. No one is going to hear that this lawsuit got dismissed or got dropped, except for people who care, and people who care aren't the target of this lawsuit. It's people who are too stupid to know the difference and who will fall in line behind Nunes. Frankly, the, the people who fall in line behind Nunes have already made up their mind that they're going to fall in line behind Nunes, whether the evidence shows that he's a good guy or not. It's a side that they want to be on, not the words that he believes in. So imagine you dropped something valuable in the water. Just imagine crystal clear stream or maybe even a, a kind of still pond, crystal clear water. You dropped something valuable in the water and uh, you know everybody can see. Well, yeah, you, you, you might be able to quickly jump in the water and get it out. But let's 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 assume everybody can see, and now everyone knows you dropped something valuable in the water, and they might be able to get to it before you. And if they had it, maybe they could even maybe it's something so valuable they could use it against you. Maybe it's a weapon or something. You dropped this thing in the water; it's your fault. But now you got to figure out how to stop people from getting to it. So maybe you muddy the waters. Maybe you make some waves. Maybe you throw something else in. You muddy the waters and suddenly it's harder for people to find the truth. So at least we get a list of allegedly defamatory statements. Now, I guess they're using these statements as that people relied on CNN's reporting because Michael Avenatti is obviously not CNN. Maxine Waters is not CNN. So these are just people that are relying on the report. And so they are accusing CNN of defamation per se. Defamation per se is when you accuse someone of defamation in a way that pretty much makes it automatically defamation without you needing to prove more, like proving that the facts are, uh, are not true or something like that. So if you're accused of something like being a criminal, that could be defamation per se. So let's see what the accusation is here. CNN made statements, and those say statements constitute defamation per se. He jumps right to the conclusion that it's defamation per se. Let's see if he explains that. The statements accuse and impute to plaintiff the commission of felonies and crimes involving moral turpitude for which plaintiff may be punished and imprisoned in a state or federal institution. Okay, so he's saying that they accused him of being a criminal and that that is defamation per se. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, that that might be the first smacking of a legal argument that I've seen. 
and then gets into the particularly three statements that he's upset with. He was not in Vienna in December 2018, he has not met with Shokin, and he has never communicated with Parnas at the time of the Vienna trip. So does that mean that everything else is true? Because I think CNN said an awful lot more about Parnas and Nunes and Shokin. If those things are the only things that are not true, I don't know what to tell them. Journalists report on what happens, and when people tell them things, they can report on what people tell them. It's not a conspiracy between the journalist and the witness or subject of the report when a reporter reports on something. So in other words, when my local TV station reports on the girls' hockey team, that's not a conspiracy between the reporter and the girls' hockey team. But he says that CNN acted in concert with Parnas and manufactured the claims about plaintiff out of whole cloth and CNN did not act in good faith because it could not have had an honest belief about the truth of its statements and that CNN harbors institutional hatred, bias, spite, and ill will toward plaintiff, the GOP, and President Trump going back many years. Wouldn't then a whole bunch of stuff that other media outlets say also be actionable? Wouldn't we just be opening the floodgates to an entire level, entirely new level of litigation about accurate news reporting? Now, I for one think that news should be reported accurately. This isn't about accurate news reporting. The standard here is defamation, so it's more so news reporting whether or not it is defamatory, not whether or not it is accurate. There is a level of inaccuracy that will not be considered defamatory. And it's very hard to describe that to you, so I'm probably not going to try. In December 2017, CNN was caught peddling fake news, misrepresenting that Donald Trump Jr. had advanced notice from WikiLeaks of documents that WikiLeaks planned to release during the 2016 presidential campaign. And the story is CNN corrects a Trump story fueling claims of fake news. So, okay, they issued a correction. I can't deny the veracity of that if that's, you know, if that is independently true and provable. But don't you think that he could have gotten to the point here in earlier than 43 pages now? This convinces me, actually, that Devin Nunes has something to hide if he is reacting this strongly to stupid CNN news reports. I don't really give any of that stuff credence either. And the House impeachment inquiry is not going to be based on what CNN said. Certainly, what someone says could lead to something else, but no one is going to impeach President Trump because CNN said so. And certainly no one's going to arrest Devin Nunes because CNN said so. As a direct result of the defamation, plaintiffs suffered presumed damages. Presumed damages. We're assuming damages. We don't, we don't presume damages in defamation cases. It must be actual damages including but not limited to insult, pain, embarrassment, humiliation, mental suffering, none of which are actual damages in a defamation claim. It's only provable actual damages. So his out-of-pocket expenses would have to be the sum of $435 million or such greater amount determined by a jury. So common law conspiracy, so he's calling it conspiracy when a news organization reports what someone is saying or doing. That's a conspiracy, according to him. He's saying that it rises to the level of conspiracy because they knew that he was telling them lies and feeding them stories. And I think he went so far above as to say that they coordinated with him to help him with his lies. He says they acted intentionally, purposefully, and with the express knowledge that it was defaming plaintiff and that this somehow constitutes a conspiracy and the damages are the same $435 million. Oh, and he asks for $350,000 in punitive damages. I don't, I, don't, I don't even know where that comes from. And everything else. And that is Steve Bliss's Devin Nunes complaint, which I really don't understand how a lawyer could file that and consider that to be anything smacking of a legal complaint that's supposed to go before a judge or a jury. That itself is a piece of propaganda, while in the thing talking about how the CNN stuff is all propaganda. It's a little weird. 
It's a little weird. I, I believe a reference to the subreddit self-aware wolves is is appropriate there. So let us know what you think in the comments below. I'm sure that won't devolve into a political fight in the comments. Maybe, maybe we have to moderate those comments. I hope not. Try to keep it civil. We, we do love you. And that is our show. Thank you for watching. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is your favorite legal news and education channel, Lawful Masses, for you, our Lawful Masses. Thank you to those of you who support us financially, making this entire show slash project slash future, future legal services benefit corporation, maybe, you were working on it, uh, for making that possible. At the $50 level, our patreon.com slash LJ French supporters and our sponsors.com slash law supporters are Aspernari, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Snorri Wisotsky, Blackleaf, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen, and I'd like to welcome two special $50 plus supporters, Rumble in the Bunghole and Cute Grills in your area. I'm sure we have no idea who those those two people are. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel this time. I did not screw it up this time, I promise. And will be in the description of the videos that drop. I will put some dog video here where possible and where not, we'll figure something else out. I love you all. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I will see you on Sunday at 10 a.m. on twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses for the live Sunday show. Have a good one. Bye.